Two men are in the hospital today with non-life-threatening injuries after a fourth package explosion went off in Austin, Texas in just two weeks. Police believe this latest bombing is linked to the three other package bombings in the city, which left two people dead. Officials say this latest explosion may have been triggered by a tripwire. The reward for information leading to the arrest of the person or persons responsible is now at $115,000. Just a short while ago, I spoke with former Texas Assistant Attorney General Rob Henneke, who lives near the area where the latest blast occurred. All right, hello, Rob, and thank you for being here. Um, you heard the blast. Did you know immediately that this was another bombing attack? It, it felt odd. I live in the same neighborhood. My house is less than a quarter of a mile away from where the bomb went off last night, uh, injuring a couple of my neighbors. And it was really unsettling. You could tell it was not a sound natural to the neighborhood and really reminded me of the big fireworks that you see the 4th of July, where you just not just hear it, but you feel the repercussion of the blast. Mm, how did your neighbors react? I mean, were, were people panicked? I mean, you assume that people are, you know, worried about mundane tasks, you know, riding their bike, getting the mail, et cetera, you know, and then this happens in their neighborhood. How are they handling all of this? Well, a good, at least a quarter of my neighborhood is still in lockdown with the residents in the immediate cordoned off area being told still to not leave their houses. Last night when the explosion went off, uh, just after this surreal moment of recognizing that there had been a act of, of uh, you know terrorist terrorism in, in my neighborhood, you know everyone on my street at the same time stepped out on the front porch and turned out on their lights and looked around, just trying to get a grasp on what had happened and uh, and to see if if we were you know directly impacted by it. Yeah, are are people afraid to go out? You said that it's it's on lockdown now. Has life kind of resumed to normal, or what's the status? No, in, in uh, the area that's cordoned off, uh, the FBI and the Austin Police Department are still in the process of sweeping the area to make sure that it's safe and also in evidence collection. Mm, wow. uh, the blast throws shrapnel over a huge period, and their technicians have to collect every bit and piece to try to help solve this crime. So what is your best guess, if you had to make one, as to what the motive might be, right? That's the question that everyone seems to be asking at this point. You know, there can't be a rational motive when you use explosive devices to set up and, and put them in a family residential neighborhood. Uh, the motive just has to be evil, uh, to harm people uh, and to cause destruction. Uh, against uh, random people. You can't target these bombs. And so it's obvious to me that it's just uh, an effort to hurt and cause panic and uh, injury to peaceful people here in Austin. Mm, yeah. Now, you've said that you believe that the, the policies of President Trump are allowing law enforcement to do its job in Austin. Can you explain that a little bit more? No, I can't. I, I commend uh, the, the federal response as well as the local response in being very deliberative and intentionally pushing back against those that want to jump to conclusions. Now, this is the fourth bomb that's gone off in Austin, and it's it's a tragedy that the first two bombs uh, killed uh, two African-American men and were located in uh, the east part of Austin. There's some people that wanted to rush to, to say that this was targeted at minorities, but we know last night the two victims were two Anglo men in their 20s. And so, you know, by not jumping to those conclusions, I think, you know, the, this this law enforcement response by the federal at the federal level has uh, been very deliberative in following the clues to hopefully that will get to the, the right outcome. And that's different from what I saw in past years where the immediate reaction was to blame something without all the facts, mm -hmm. uh, but to make that consistent with, you know, some sort of narrative or agenda that was being driven. Right. So last question quickly, what are the next steps? What happens from here? Well, the next steps for, for my neighborhood are to, to recover, to try to comfort our children. Uh, my, my six and eight year old sons were, were woken up by the blast and uh, to, to try to get a, a, a uh, you know, grip on this. Uh, obviously, we support law enforcement. We support the work of the Austin Police Department and the FBI and want to fully support them in bringing every person to justice that's responsible for uh, this terrorist act in our neighborhood. Right. 
Thank you so much, Rob. We really appreciate your time and for your perspective. Thank you. All right, quick reactions. I think Eric. This, I, I'm hoping this is only one person I think will get caught, but, but as the, uh, the, the guest pointed out, it could actually be more than one. It could be a copycat on the last one because it doesn't fit the profile of the first one. Yeah, I think Liz. what's horrifying is it's just random. I mean, bombs can be placed anywhere and they can go off anywhere. It makes it very hard to track it down. What will get this guy eventually is the $115,000 reward and someone knowing who it is, mm, hopefully. Great. Great points both. Yeah. All right, coming up, we'll take more of your calls after the break.